everybody, it's Amber with She's Crafting. Today is Sunday, um, March 10th. I'm back for an update. It's been about three weeks, I think, and I have a lot to share with you, of course. Um, Ringo, otherwise known as Memo, is here to distract. You know, if I, I have to stop hitting you so I can show them the thing. We'll see how that goes. You're sweet, sweet Katie. Okay, so I had to do the saddest thing this week. Before I actually show you, I have to tell you. I am pretty bummed out about this. I had to, I had to quit Magical School of Stitches and Literature. I need you all to be sad for me. Not really, but... I, okay, so here's the deal. I couldn't keep up. I tried my best. I wanted to. I wanted to so bad. I loved all of the homework assignments. It was so motivating. But the problem was it was so motivating for me that, to get that done that I wasn't getting my other things done, as in like taking care of my house. Um, so we are in a very, very se busy season of our lives. And um Every night has something. We have volleyball and karate and baseball and spirit nights and um, what else? I, I have meetings. I'm a teacher, so, you know, there's like a meeting every other day um, or a volunteer something or and then we had open house and and it's like that every week. It's not even like anyway, I sound like I'm complaining and I'm absolutely not complaining. It's a blessing the plum blessing, but. Um, the reality is it, it just makes um, time very limited. And so I always think that I can get more done than I can actually get done. <laughs> and the weekends are also um, volleyball tournaments and baseball games and, you know, house stuff. So it stinks, but I, I had to do it. So I will just cheer you guys on from the sidelines and um, follow you on Instagram and YouTube and stitch the, the homework vicariously through you, right? It doesn't mean I'm going to stop stitching. I still have tons to show you because I did try to keep up and um, sometimes I found that I would stitch really late and get it done, but I didn't, didn't get it turned in in time. Um, and that's just sad. But anyway, all right. I think it's time to show the things. I'm going to stop petting you now, okay? Okay. So, um, I'm not going to go in any particular order, and honestly, I don't remember what half these things um, were assigned for. If I do, I'll tell you. But anyway, here we go. So one of the things I stitched on was um, spring butterflies. This is from Just Cross Stitch. Just Cross Stitch. I want to, I want to say um, June 2014 for some reason. April 2015 and are you okay I this is a kind of slow going project because there's tons of color changes um, and some blending and so it ends up being pretty slow to work on but it looks really great um, and this is just on a 28 count MCG textiles, probably natural or oatmeal. I think it's oatmeal. I, I very much like this fabric. Um, oh gosh, there's cat hair all over the place now. Lovely. That's great. Okay. This is another one. Um, so here's the story with this. I'll show you the pattern. Or not the pattern. What did it look like? This is Harry Potter spells. I started, I, I color, here's the story. Um, about a year and a half ago, two years, I don't know. I dyed some fabric to stitch this for my, my daughter. She really likes purple. And so I colored it a very, very dark, almost black purple with some um, modeling throughout. It was ice dyed. And I was going to stitch it in gold, and I was going to put the Patronus and some other things in beads. Now, the beads looked fantastic, 
but the stitching didn't. And I think what happened was when I dyed it, you know, some fabrics very much shrink up and that one did and they looked wonky. It did not look good. So I've restarted it and I'm changing the color scheme. So now this is where I am. I'm going to be stitching the dark ones in black, the light ones in white, and then still doing the beads in um, gold, I believe. And then also like the snitch, where is that? Oh, you can hardly see it. It looks like a basketball. Um, will be gold and some other things. Gold um, petite treasure bait. So that's what I got done. I love it. I think it looks fantastic. And I am, I, I feel like that one's going to go fairly quickly. Story of my life. I say that and then it doesn't. So let's see. Love what else did I stitch on? Been a minute since I've seen you. So. I stitched on Design Work Stitchers ABCs, and I'm using the Ada that came with it. I'll show you first what I worked on, and then I'll show you the whole thing. So, up on this top corner, I worked on the iron. I, I, I finished that block. I put in some more backstitch in this area because this is like crazy backstitching and some other color. I backstitched this and I started on this block and obviously did some backstitching. I, it's backstitch crazy for real. And then here is the whole thing so far. Um, um Obviously, you can tell I started in the middle, worked my way up here. Now I'm going to go across and down. So this is another slow going project because uh, it has tons of color changes and tons of colors, which is not a bad thing. I am not mad at that. It just takes time. Okay. I guess I can put it them away afterwards, couldn't I? All right, something else I worked on. This one I do remember the homework was, um, what happened was randomly in the w middle of the week, which I don't look at Facebook during the week. And so luckily somebody had messaged everybody and said, hey, if you haven't seen the post, you need to make a, um, a list of your top 20 lips. And I was like, I don't, I saw that. So I got that through email, like a you know, when they, you randomly get some, I don't know, anyway, and, um, I was like, I don't have time to go sifting through my 300 whips or whatever, so what I did was I just grabbed a piece of paper, and I, off the top of my head, listed 20 of my projects, so I thought this was a whip, and turns out I never have started it, so it's a whip now, June from Cricut Collection, and what happened was the following day or the day after, you're going to have to wait. You're stuck. <sighs> the cat wants out now. Um, they sent out the homework and you were supposed to stitch on, depending upon how, how long your list was, if your list was 20, you were supposed to stitch on the 13th thing. And this happened to be the 13th thing on my list. So I started it and I put a U, the U or part of the U in. This is on 36 count Diva by, I believe, Picture This Plus. And that is a pretty true to life representation. It's very, very bright. <laughs> um, it is the real thing on pink. Okay, so something else you were supposed to stitch on a skeleton. Yeah, a skeleton. And I went through my projects and looked for a skeleton. And the only one I could come up with, and it didn't have to be the skeleton you were stitching on, it just had to be in the project. So I did find in this one that I hadn't started yet, where did it go now? These skulls. 
wait, no, I'm on the wrong side now. These skulls right there. So winner, winner, chicken dinner, right? Now, let me tell you the, my process on this. So I didn't, first of all, I didn't realize when I bought this that all of the colors that were in it, when I looked at it, I thought it was a monochromatic. Well, after I started to look at the floss list, they are all in like Thread Gather, Crescent, Colorworks, Gloriana, NP Silks, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's no DMC conversion necessarily. And what happens to me, I would like to say that I will get these silk fibers, but here's what happens to me. And I know this happens to other people. At least I hope it does. So I go to my, my LNS with full intention. This is what happened last time when I got all those patterns. So I will go to my LNS with full intentions on getting thread. That is what I'll be specifically going for. And my LNS has two rooms, right? So you go in and the first one's the patterns and the models and the gorgeous stuff. And then you go to the second room and it's um, fabric and thread. I never get to the second room, you know, y'all. I blow my budget the first room and then I'm like, well, now I don't have the threads. And then I end up buying um, just, you know, generic-ish a lot of the time um, fabric or use what is in my stash, which was what happened here. So... All that to say that I did not get the silks and I decided, well, I can do my own little um, DMC conversion. So the colors on this are very like, like I said, I thought it was black and it turns out that there's some very dark like plum color and some yellow um, and some blacks, but they're all silks. So what I did was I am stitching it um, a DMC 154 is going to be the plum color I use. Um, I mean, it's dark. I love it. And I think it's going to look great on this fabric. And then what else happened was I said I was going to use something from my stash. And I knew the fabric I was going to use was this um, green modeled fabric and it turned out to not be big enough so I was like well what if I stitched it one over one and that's what I'm doing so one over one there's an acorn um it's tiny it's for real tiny um and so now it's going to be to me manageable for hanging on the wall um it was it was intense stitching one over one I can't say I just liked it but I will say that I think it would be I think it's probably easier to do it on linen than this because this is a Lugana and it's very plump so whenever you're doing the one over one you're the stitches are almost getting lost and it was difficult in, at some, in some ways, I thought, because of the plumpness of the nature of the fabric. So, there's that. Now, another challenge, you had to stitch on some things that would have protected the um, students from getting... Um, when they were attacked by the basilisk, things that made them petrify. Okay. So water was one of those things. And so I pulled out Andromeda because I knew that there was some water here. And where did my paper go? Let's use this one. Here is where I am. This is on 32 count Weak Style Works Spanish Moss. And there is Miss Andromeda. So I put in all this. Um, it's so pretty. Who would think that these greens would work, right? But they do. It's so cool. 
Um, this is a pretty good representation of this fabric too. It's gray purple. Yeah, looks good. Okay, hello, Mamo. Are you back? What else did I work on? I worked on one of my favorite patterns that I currently have. And that is um, Plum Street Samplers Liberty's Welcome. I love everything about this. I cannot wait to work on that gorgeous border. And I'll get plenty of it, right? It's huge. Now, the cats drink my water every time. Every time. He doesn't drink anybody else's water. He only drinks mine. So I got that part done. It's part of the top of the roof. Um, no, it goes like that. No, it goes like that. I can't remember. Anyway, this is going to be a window. Lots of stitching even there, but you know, you wouldn't think so. Like 500 stitches or something. Okay. What else? What else did I work on? I love him I do I promise okay I worked on this is from the world of cross stitch uh, sampler favorite samplers and this was you were supposed to stitch on something that could be used as a weapon so I thought that this shovel could be a weapon so I put in some, I put in the shovel and then I also put in some other stitches to meet the number requirement. Okay. I can't remember if I had started this last time or not. Um, I can't remember. So anyways, this is Halloween Eve by Blackbird Designs and I am revising not revising. I'm kind of modifying um, to leave out the um, alphabet. I'll just add in this border along the top there. And if I feel like I need to put something there, I can put one of these motifs or something. Anyway. Um. All right. There's the bird. Part of the pumpkin and the top of the cat. This is, I do remember I had started this one because I'm gushing about the amazing blending. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because when you pull out the um, DMC conversion, the blend that she suggests, one of them's green. And I was like, a green bird? I mean, like a crow. And it works. It looks awesome. So part of the um, extra credit for February was to stitch on words. So I pulled out Lizzie, Kate, A Good Marriage, and I found that this was also really good to work on at tournaments because it didn't take a huge amount of brain power, limited threads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am almost halfway. Um, almost halfway because this is the middle so that part done and I need to do this and then I'll be halfway so I figure this will get done this year um, I'm not a huge fan I have words um, but I do love the um, I do love the sentiments behind this so that's why but I'm you know as far as stitching on words that's why I'm editing the alphabet I know on samplers it's often important, but so to each his own, right? Let's see. I also worked on the Adams Family. This is also Plum Street Samplers, um, Paulette Stewart, and this. I had some of this done um, already before, but I know at least I stitched on the cauldron because you were supposed to stitch on something you could find at Diagon Alley. 
and you can buy cauldrons at the cauldron shop at Diagonal. Okay, this I restarted because in the last video, remember I was saying and showing you how awful those stitches were from the first time I stitched to this and how I've grown as a stitcher, so I couldn't take it. They were bad. And you know, I've talked about I'll do nearly anything to not rip something out, but no. Um, so I ripped all of them out, basically restarted it, and this is where I am. Uh, that one is, so I'm thinking, I can't remember now, I think it's this one, yeah, so it's going to be cute, and you know, I can't stand this fabric, I mean, it's like burlap, but use what you have, so that's all my stitching. You can't go out yet. You just have to wait. I, that's all I've gotten done because I, um, you know, is stitching. I haven't done any other crafting because I just try to keep up, right? Um, I have done reading though. And one book I read was The Alchemist. This is by Michael Scott. It makes me think of The Office every time. I really liked this book. Um, somewhere between four and 4.5 stars. Um, for me, the, it's a part of, I don't know if it's a trilogy or just a series or whatever. I know that the next one that is called, um, The Magician. This book was primarily setting up the characters and, you know, opening the plot and get, you know, just setting everything up. And I loved it. It was very page turning. I about 20 pages left and I'm sure something surprising is going to happen to set up the next book. And I really liked it. So it's a YA fantasy. And uh, even though it's got Nicholas, the, the Secrets of the Immortal, Nicholas Flamel is the rest of the title there. Um, he's really a secondary character. So interesting yeah it's gonna be good and or the next one I mean I also listened to Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard which is a another YA fantasy uh I gave it a four star I really 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 liked it at first I was kind of in fact I had started it once in, in book form and um, didn't get it finished before it was due back to the library. And this time I thought, you know, I'm going to listen to it. Sometimes, you know, a book I won't get through in book form, I'll listen to and really enjoy. And that was the case here. Um, the guy that read it, you can really imagine him being the character. And, you know, that adds to the story, in my opinion. Um, it was about Norse gods, and um, which I find really in interesting anyway and but the way that he portrayed them was hilarious um I don't want to give too much away but basically the characterization makes the book um like Thor is a Netflix binge watching burping farting slob there's that so you should get it it's really good I'll try to remember to link it below. So anyway, that's really all I have to share with you guys. Um, like I said, I'm going to be rooting everybody on and for magical stitches and, um, yeah. So anyway, when nothing else to talk about, I'm going to stop here because I don't want to ramble. So I'll see you all later. Bye.